friends, my name is Maddie Hicks and thanks to Oz Arts and Metro Nashville Public Schools, I am here again today to bring you another new STEAM project and I am really, really, really excited about this one. But first, let's just do a quick refresher on what STEAM means. So STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. And when we're doing STEAM projects like the one we're doing today, we get to use all these different subject areas together to make something innovative and new. And this is something that I love to do in my own personal artwork. I am a local Nashville-based multimedia artist, which means that in my process of making art, I like using all sorts of different mediums, taking them and blending them together, just like we do with these STEAM projects. So if I'm making a theater piece, I might also have some kind of video art in the background. Or if I'm making a movie, I might also have live dance be a part of that. So in this project today, we are gonna to get to use some elements of theater, some elements of music, and our own Nashville history to make something totally new. So today we are going to make a theatrical soundscape. And I'm gonna explain exactly what that means in a second here, but first, let's make sure we have all of our materials ready. So for you guys, all you're gonna need for now is just some paper to write with and then either a pen or a pencil. I'm gonna be using a uh, dry erase board here. And then later in the video, we are gonna kind of look around our room or our house, wherever we are, and we're gonna find some other objects to use uh, but that's going to be different for everybody depending on what you do. So don't worry about that part yet. So what is a theatrical soundscape you might be wondering? Well, let me tell you. So a theatrical soundscape is any kind of series of sounds made by performers that are going to suggest a setting or a scene. It could be anything from the sound of wind to creaking floorboards, or even laughter. So a theatrical soundscape is any kind of sounds made by live performers in a theater. And I should say that I'm not talking about a movie theater, but the kind of live theater that you would go to see, like a play. So let's imagine we're going to go watch a play right now. How is this different than watching a TV show or a movie at home? Now some of you may have actually seen a play before, but some of you probably haven't, so you might have to just use your imagination here. How would this be different than watching a movie or a TV show? Well, for one thing, in a play, the people are right there in front of you which is pretty cool. Now in a play, the people have rehearsed and memorized their lines, but if something goes wrong, they're just gonna have to keep going, which means sometimes if somebody accidentally forgets a line or forgets to go on stage, the other people there might have to make something up to try to fix it. Now in a movie, if an actor makes a mistake, they can just call cut and stop the camera and redo it and nobody would ever know watching it. But in a play, it's all live. It's all happening right in front of you. If somebody slips and falls on stage, they're gonna have to slip and fall on stage and then stand up and just keep going. <laughs> Another thing that can be different about going to see a play is that usually if you go to see a play, the people that are acting in the play are real people that live in your community. You might even run into them at a grocery store. Where if you watch a movie at home, like on Netflix, you're probably not gonna ever see or meet those actors in real life. They probably live in New York or Hollywood. And another really big difference between going to see a play and watching a movie or a TV show at home is that you can't do special effects the same way. So in a movie, they can make it look like a car really blows up and it's super awesome and realistic. But in a play, it's a little bit different, right? We have to think about safety. 
we're probably not going to actually start a fire. It's a different medium, and we have to use our imaginations a lot more in theater than we do when watching a movie. Now this is one of many reasons that a lot of people making theater will use live theatrical soundscapes to sort of make these special effects, to make something feel like it's happening, even though we're not gonna be able to film it and edit it and make it super real, we can still have this really awesome, interesting effect. Let's look at some ways people used to make theatrical soundscapes a long time ago. So if you'll notice here, we're seeing a lot of really big, heavy materials like uh, wood or metal, and that's so that everybody in the whole theater could hear those sounds. But for our soundscapes today, since we're not actually going to put them in a play, since we're just kind of learning and exploring, we don't have to worry about making super loud sounds. We can use quiet sounds too. Now that we've talked a little bit about what a soundscape is, let's talk about why. Why would you ever use a soundscape? A soundscape is kind of like a piece of music, right? It can help you know how to feel, what sort of emotions are happening in the moment. Is this scary? Is this exciting? Is it going to be funny? A soundscape can give you really helpful context clues as well, like where are we? Are we in a busy city? Are we in the country? What's the weather like? This is why a soundscape can be really helpful and sort of build the world of the story. But before you guys make your own soundscapes today, let's make one together first so you can kind of see the process of how we're going to do it. We are going to use a process called a design thinking, and that's going to kind of be the structure that we use to guide us. So you can see here, step one is empathize. So before we start, let's try to really understand what it is we're making and what the goal is. So we are making a theatrical soundscape. But let's get more specific. Let's make a thunderstorm soundscape to help us practice. The goal is to try to make five different sounds that will create a thunderstorm effect. All right, so we are going to make a thunderstorm and it is going to have five sounds. Step two is to define. So in this step of design thinking, we usually want to think about a problem that we need to solve. What challenges do we have? So we want to make a thunderstorm soundscape, but we need to use only our bodies or objects in our house. We can't use words. We can't use sounds on YouTube. Yeah, that's definitely going to be challenging. All right, so we know we are making a thunderstorm. We need five different sounds and we can only use our bodies or objects. We can't say words and we can't find cool sounds on YouTube. Okay, now I think we're almost ready to get started. Let's look at step three here. Step three is the idea phase. So we are going to do some brainstorming. We are gonna come up with some crazy cool ideas. Okay, so we're making a thunderstorm soundscape. We're only using our bodies and household objects. What kind of sounds do we want to make? What might you hear in a thunderstorm? We hear wind. So I'm gonna say sound number one, wind. We're definitely gonna hear some rain, probably like some drizzly rain and then like some heavy rain. So I'm gonna actually divide that into two. Let's say it's gonna sprinkle first and then it's gonna pour. Okay, so that's three out of the sound of wind, the sound of sprinkly drizzly rain, the sound of rain pouring. Hmm. What about thunder? Definitely need thunder for a thunderstorm. So loud, booming thunder. And then I think maybe that sort of like crackling sound that lightning can make, that would be a nice addition too. 
Okay, so when you guys are making your soundscapes on your own, you're probably gonna wanna do something similar to this. You're gonna wanna decide what it is that you're making. You're gonna wanna list five sounds. Remember the rules, it has to come from your body or an object. And then you're gonna wanna break it down. This is really gonna help us out. So I'm gonna find something that sounds like wind, something that sounds like sprinkling, pouring, thunder, and then like a crackling sound. All right, so let's go ahead and look and see what's next with our design thinking. So we're gonna kind of combine steps four and five, which are prototype and test. So this is the really fun part because we are going to start looking around uh, our room or our house, and we're gonna see what we can find to make these sounds. Now, we're probably not gonna get it right on the first try, but don't give up. We're gonna try to get really creative. We're gonna test out different ideas, try out different sounds, and we're gonna see if we can find the best sound possible. And now for the test step, this is a good one to do uh, with a family member or a friend, uh, where you can make the sound for them and get some feedback. So you might say, hey, does this sound like rain? And they might say, kind of. Or they might say, yes, that is perfect, that is awesome. They might also have some new ideas that you can try. All right, so now you guys get to come with me as I kind of dig around my room and my house to try to find all of these different sounds. Okay, so I think I found a good one for wind. This is just a notebook that I had laying around. And I was kind of thinking about how uh, that picture I showed you guys, they used to use big pieces of sheet metal and they kind of would wave that to make wind. So I thought maybe I could do a similar thing. Kind of windy, right? And then I also found, I have this noise maker uh, from something forever ago and I kept it because it's fun. Now if I blow it all the way, <laughs> not at all. But I was like, what if I just barely kind of blow into it? <laughs> Whoop, too much. Can you guys hear that? And I really like that. I think I actually like that better than this one. But I'm gonna keep looking. Let's go to my kitchen. <laughs> Got another idea before I even made it to my kitchen. I have this poster with all these different pretty birds on it. And I was like, okay, the notebook idea I think was a good idea. But because the paper was so small, it was hard to kind of wave it around. So I tried this out. Do windy. So now I've got three really good options for wind. So I think I'm gonna move on to uh, drizzly rain next. Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, I just started looking around here for other things that can make good sounds. And I thought about how uh, when I was a little kid, we used to put like rice or beans and like a toilet paper roll to make like a shaker. And that's kind of the right idea for drizzly rain sound. So I found these uh, little sunflower kernels that I like to put in my salad. I thought maybe Now I like this, but it's hard to control them in the bag. So I'm thinking I'm going to try to put some of these in a cup or something where I can kind of shake it. Okay, I've got a mug now and I put some of these sunflower seeds in here. Check it out. It almost sounds like rain kind of drizzling on a roof. Let's try a couple other rain options to see what we like the best. All right, now if you guys remember, the two rules are that you can use household objects uh, but you can also use your bodies to help make the sound. And I didn't really explain exactly what I meant by that, but let me just kind of demonstrate it for you. So I have this little tin of tea and using my hand. You can also just use 
only your hands to kind of make that just like rain really gently falling and you could play with the speed too maybe it starts falling down faster just a bit louder which is why I like the tin All right, now let's make it pour rain next. Okay, here is where we keep my cat's uh, dry food. Let's see if this sounds like rain. Another thing you can do is you can look around outside. So I went in my driveway. I found some little rocks. And this is just a container that I use for like decorating cookies. But you can put them in anything. And we're gonna see if this sounds kind of like the rain pouring effect. I kinda like this one too. For thunder, I want something really low and deep. So I actually got the idea to do, I'm gonna be rolling my big trash can. And I think that's gonna work perfect for a thunder because sometimes when I hear my neighbors moving their trash cans, I actually think there's a thunderstorm happening and it's just these guys. So that's maybe the easiest one, surprisingly, so far. So we've got one left to do and we're gonna try to find a crackling sound next. I think I'm gonna head back inside. Okay, back in my living room, I feel like I've got really good options for wind, drizzly rain, pouring rain, and thunder. Now I just need uh, like a crackling sort of lightning sound. So I was trying out, maybe just taking like, I've got like a pencil and a marker. Not really working. And then I went back to paper just cause that's an easy one and almost everybody has it. Um, and remember I have seen where people would do like a a rip and I actually think that's gonna be it. Picture like a strike of lightning. Not bad. You can even kinda double time this one to have sort of windy sounds. And a lightning rip. Nice. Just so you guys can kind of see how this would all work together if we had a bunch of people doing them at once, I'm gonna play you my thunderstorm sounds using the actual sounds that I showed you guys in the video here a second ago. So imagine our thunderstorm starting to rain. All right, so now it is your turn to make your very own soundscape and yours is gonna be inspired by some really cool Nashville history. So some of you guys may have been to Cornelia Fort Park. It is one of my favorite parks. It's perfect for going for a walk or riding your bike. But you may or may not know that Cornelia Fort Air Park is based on a real person. So we're gonna learn a little bit about her and then you guys are gonna make a soundscape inspired by her story. Cornelia Fort was a kind of a wild child. She grew up on uh, 365 acres of farmland that stretched across the Cumberland River right here in Nashville, Tennessee. And you can kind of see in this picture, she was uh, kind of a, a daredevil child. Uh, she would stand up on the backs of horses uh, which would freak her father out, uh, but she thought it was funny. She was kind of the spontaneous, like, tough kid. So growing up, the Fort family was pretty wealthy. They had a lot of nice things, nice clothing, and good food to eat, 
and uh, Cornelia Fort had to go to these fancy parties called cotillions where you get dressed up in poofy dresses and you practice dancing and manners. And you can see Cornelia Fort standing in the back here, kind of looking away from the camera and frowning because she did not like these fancy parties. She was not very girly. She wanted to go fly her plane. At this point, she had already started to discover her love of flying, and that was really all she wanted to do, which not a lot of women did at that time. And here is Cornelia Fort. Uh, she is becoming a member of the WAFS here, which is the Women's Auxiliary Flying Squadron in 1942, where she is going to serve her country. And she makes history when shortly after that, she actually is in the air and witnesses the attack of Pearl Harbor from the sky on December 7th, 1941, which she survives. And unfortunately, not long after that, she dies uh, in a plane crash ferrying from her base in Long Beach, California, um, which was very tragic as she was so young and so talented. But upon her death, uh, Cornelia Fort became the first woman to die in service to her country. So she has made Nashville very proud and made history there, which we honor her with Cornelia Fort Park. All right, so now it's time for you guys to make your soundscape, still using that design thinking uh, as our structure. So let's quickly review the first two steps, which are gonna be pretty similar to what we did before. Uh, you are going to make a soundscape using only your bodies and household objects. You will need to create at least five different sounds. Uh, but this time I'm not telling you what your soundscape is. You are going to choose based on the story of Cornelia Fort. So let's think back on what we just learned about Cornelia Fort and see if there's any potentials to pull out a really cool soundscape. So remember we learned that she was kind of a wild child. She grew up on a farm along the Cumberland River. She even used to stand on horses and do crazy tricks. Now that could make for a really good soundscape. So if I was going to choose that soundscape of the farm, what are some sounds that I might want to use? So we know that they were on the Cumberland River, so there could be river sounds. What might you hear on a farm? Maybe some different animals. Maybe some crickets chirping. Maybe there's wind blowing through the farm, right? Okay, now what's another option we could choose from the Cornelia Fort story? So we also learned that Cornelia had to go to all these fancy parties and she kind of hated them, but she went anyway. Now what would those parties sound like? So if we wanted to do a party soundscape, we might hear some dancing feet. We might hear some laughter. Another cool soundscape you could pull from this story is you could imagine what did it feel like the first time Cornelia ever flew a plane? What kind of noises did she hear? Was there the buzzing of the engine? Was her heart beating really fast? She was excited or nervous? All right, so it's totally up to you. You could do a farm, you could do a fancy party, you could do an airplane, or you might have your own crazy cool ideas from this story. So after you choose your soundscape, the rest is up to you. You're gonna come up with five sounds and you're gonna see how creatively you can make them. Now, if you have a phone or a computer you can use to actually record the sounds, that would be a really cool way to share them with a parent or a teacher or a friend. But if not, you can just use your paper and your pencil and you can write down the different sounds you used and how you made them. Maybe why you chose the different objects that you chose. All right, well, I hope you guys have fun with this project, uh, making some soundscapes inspired by Cornelia Fort. And remember, the sky's the limit. Get it? Because she flew airplanes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I hope you have fun creating and uh, I'll see you next time.